Welcome back Year 9. What we're looking at in this video are negative indices. Now to show you what negative indices mean, uh, I'm going to look at this table here. Um, this is similar to what I've done with the zero index, but we're going to actually continue our pattern all the way down to our negative indices. So as you can see on the left, in, on the left hand column and in the right hand column, I've got a, a base and, and I'm slowly reducing that base. Uh, each time I'm reducing one of the index. So we can see we go from three, two, one, zero to the negatives. I do the same with the base five. Now with the first few, I've actually put the answer in because we know what two to the power of three is, two, two squared, two to the power of one. And if we've looked at the zero index before, we know that two to the power of zero is one. I've done the same with the uh, base five. Now what we can see hopefully is there is a pattern with this table. Eight to four to two to one. Each time I, I do that step, I am dividing by two, aren't I? Because really what's happening is instead of multiplying by two, uh, uh, multiplying uh, by itself three times, two times two times two, here we are multiplying by itself just twice. So it is effectively dividing by two by removing that, uh, that multiple of two. So let's do the same with the fives. As we can see, each time we progress down this table, we are actually dividing by five until we get to one. Now we can continue this pattern because what we've been doing on this on this column, this left hand column, is the same, isn't it? We've dropped an index each time, and that equates to dividing by two each time. So let's continue this pattern then. If we divide uh, one by two, we get one over two. Let's divide that by two. If you divide a half into two pieces, you get a quarter. We do the same and we get an eighth. Now what you might be able to see here is this is actually the same as saying one over two to the power of one. This here is the same as saying one to the over 2 to the power of 2. So 1 over 4 is the same as 1 over 2 squared. 1 over 8 is the same as saying 1 over 2 to the power of 3. Okay, let's do the other one. We're dividing by 5, so we'd have 1 over 5. I'll write it the same way so we can see the pattern. If you divide that in 5, you get 1 over 25. That's the same as 1 over 5 squared. And finally, if we do that again, we get 1 over 125, which is the same as 1 over 5 cubed, or 5 to the power of 3. So we have done exactly the same thing with this pattern. We've divided by 2 each time. We've divided by 5 each time. And as you can see, we can get some really good results. This 2 to the negative 1 is actually equal to 1 over 2 or 1 over 2 to the positive 1. The same goes for this one. If we have 2 to the negative 2, what's happened here? Well, it looks like it's gone from the numerator. It's moved that that whole term has moved to the bottom of the fraction or its now denominator over 1. And that index is now positive. There is a pattern to this and we can get a general form. A general form for this negative index rule. This is the general rule. An index, a base to the power of a negative, so a to the power of negative n, so a negative index, is equal to 1 over that same base to the positive index. So like I was saying before, if we have this term here and we want that to be a positive, if, we'll, if we want to express it as a positive index, what we're doing is really effectively moving it to the bottom and, uh, and of, of course we'd have a one on the top. So we're taking the reciprocal and then this 
this index is now positive. There's another way that I can show this. If we go down here, I want you to consider expanding this and simplifying it. So 2 to the power of 4 is the same as 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. How many times is the 2 multiplied by itself? We've got the four 2s there. So 2 to the power of 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Here we go. Now, if you were just to do this normally, in the past you'd probably just do this, wouldn't you? Cancelling, cancelling those common factors. One on the top, one on the bottom. One on the top, one on the bottom. This one is left. There's nothing left there on the top, but effectively we do have a 1, because when you cancel out these, you are left with a 1. So really, this is equal to 1 half. Let's do it using index laws. Remember, we've got the same base. This is being divided, so we subtract the indices. 4 minus 5, negative 1. Can you see we've got the same result? This 2 to the 4 over 2 to the 5 is equal to 1 half. 2 to the 4 over 2 to the 5 is the same as saying 2 to the negative 1. So these two here are equal to each other, which is exactly what I've got up here. Imagine this is a 2 and this is a 1. Equals 1 over 2. We don't usually write that there, do we? We just know it's there. And there we go. Okay, I want to just show you one more thing before we look at some examples, and that's this here. This was our rule that we just discovered before, but the opposite is also true. So if you have a positive index, a to the power of n, and if you move that term to the bottom of a fraction, so make it the denominator, it does change the sign, so it does become negative. Why is this true? Well, if we have uh, a to the power of negative n, and we multiply that a by a to the power of positive n, we should always get 1. Now, let's do that with numbers so we can see how this works. What I'm saying is 2 to the negative 1 by 2 to the positive 1 is equal to 1. This is because 2 to the negative 1 is equal to a half. Multiply that by 2 and you get 1. So how do I get from this rule here to that one up above? All I do is divide both sides by a to the negative n. So this is what I'm doing. Cancel. Therefore, a to the negative n equals 1 over a to the positive n, and that is what is written above. So both of these rules are true. Both of these are going to be exceptionally helpful when we are simplifying with negative indices. Let's have a look at some examples then. Here we go evaluate. So that means we, we want to find what this is actually equal to. Pick another colour. Here we go. 7 to the power of negative 2. Okay. I've got a negative index. So what I'm going to do is put that, that term there to the bottom of the fraction. Leaves a 1 on the top. And that index there is now positive. So that's using that negative index rule that I just showed you before. Now we must evaluate 7 squared is 49. That's the first one done. This next one, I'm going to do this much the same way. 2 to the negative 4 is the same as 1 over 2 to the positive 4. This is equal to 1 over 2. 2 to the 4, 16. And there's our first couple of examples done. Next one. 
Write as a single power, then evaluate. So what we want to do is use our index laws here. Let's do this one first. 3 squared over 3 to the power of 4. So let's subtract the indices. 3 to the power of 2 minus 4. You can do it like this. I like to just do it in one step. I skip that one there. I don't write it. I just do 2 minus 4 in my head. Like that. This is equal to 1 over 3 squared using our negative index laws. That is equal to 1 over 9. Next one. 5 squared over 5 to the power of 5. So let's use our negative index. Well, let's use our index laws. 2 minus 5 negative 3. This is equal to 1 over 5 to the positive 3. That's equal to 1 over 1, 2, 5. Hopefully this is starting to make sense. Let's look at the last couple then. 5 to the power of 7 times 5 to the negative 9. Notice we've got multiplication and we've got same base. So we're going to add the indices. So this is equal to 5 to the power of 7 plus negative 9. So 7 plus negative 9 is 7 take 9. So that's negative 2. This is equal to 1 over 5 squared. It's now positive. This is 1 over 25. This one here, 2 to the power of 4 times 2 to the negative 2. Same base, being multiplied, so we add the indices. 4 plus negative 2 is 4 minus 2. And that's equal to 4. Pause where you wish so that you can get these examples into your book if you'd like them for further reference. I've got one more slide to go through just a couple of trickier ones. Simplify expressing answer with answer with positive indices. So we're going to express our answer always with positive indices. That's generally the, the, the conventional way to go and that's what we'll do a lot in this topic, making sure our answer always has positive indices. Okay, so this first one here, what I'm going to do is look for the base that's the same it's being multiplied here, so I'll add those indices. My first one I'm going to do is x. This is x to the negative 2 times x to the negative 4. So this is negative 2 take 4. This one here is both y's, obviously, so negative 2 plus 5. Okay, we want our positive indices now. So this is equal to 1 over x to the 6 times y to the 3. That's equal to y to the 3 over x to the 6. So what I've done here is multiplied 1 times y cubed over x to the power of 6. Now, normally I would work down the page, obviously, but I haven't left myself much room, which is why I've gone sideways. This one here. Okay. Remember when we're dividing, we subtract the indices. So that's what I'm going to do first. I'm going to concentrate on the A. A, 2 minus 3, negative 1 b cubed over b squared. So this is b to the power of 3 minus 2. That's 1. Okay, this is going to be 1 over a. I'm not going to write the 1. Multiply by b, don't need that 1. And that's equal to multiply the numerators out, b over a. Again, pause wherever you need to if you would like to put these examples into a summary book, if you wish to look back on them down the track. Thank you very much for your time.
and we'll go through these in more detail in class.